to transport. So, who has people travelling to their events? Beautiful. Yes, everyone. <laughs> uh, and a bit of a challenge in Cornwall because your infrastructure is not great. But there are things that you can do. As you found out. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not everyone has the Uncle Taxi available. No. I came by train um, and put a, I put a call out on um, the Laddock Facebook group to see whether I could get to the two venues I wanted to go to. So, um, lift sharing. I tested out lift sharing in Cornwall. Any good? Uh, yeah, I've got the, the, uh, <laughs> the uncle taxi and the next door neighbour of where um, of my aunt's. Oh, perfect. So there we go. So the carbon footprint of events. So this is an international event I worked on. Participant travel. So this is because people were flying. So this is all the other bits. We've got en here we go energy consumption, accommodation, meals, materials, staff travel, participant travel. So this is an event with flights. This is Shambhala, um, and as they got better at reducing their energy usage and their waste and things, the biggest issue was audience travel. So, and they're a greenfield site um, in the middle of nowhere. So what can you do? You can steer people with your choice architecture because this is somewhere where you might not have so much control. So you can focus on car sharing instead of public transport. So especially somewhere like this, um, there is websites like Go Car Share, um, Blah Blah Car uh, and others. Um, you can think about where you're planning your event. So can you make sure that it's somewhere with uh, public transport or a train station at least. Um, how do you encourage lift sharing? High car parking charges. So that forces people to want to share a car. Um, and re rewards for cyclists if someone dares to travel on the A30 on a bicycle. <laughs> you get your life. That is the first one. <laughs> Um, so you can use, there's a carbon calculator set up for the event sector called Ecolibrium, and so you can balance your travel and accommodation. Um, and you can find out, so quite often if you're trying to work out, you know, how do people travel, you want to get that data, you need to be asking it in your surveys. So, um, staff travel, maybe a little more control. So can you have a tr travel policy for your staff and your artists. So, um, booking local contractors where possible. Um, if you're bringing in European artists, can you say, um, maybe harder for Cornwall, but if you're within, you know, if you're from coming from Paris, can you get the Eurostar? Um, so, uh, some places have one, it's like with, if you're within four hours, uh, if you can get someone within four hours on a train, then that is the option over flying. Uh, the Screen Cornwall have a slow travel policy. Yeah, we have a, 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 a slow travel policy and we're now looking at introducing like additional days holiday if you're going to use slow travel to get to your holiday or something yeah. like that. So that is called um, the uh, mm, something travel perks, climate perks. Mm. So it's a travel scheme for people who are going on holiday um, their staff will give the, the organisation will give them extra hours if they choose to take the um, overland option or the, the, the boat um, versus the train uh, versus the plane. So when you're getting around your site, can do you need to have electric buggies or gas buggies or diesel buggies? Could you give people bicycles to get around? Is that possible? Um, I was doing some work with Newland Gallery and they've got bicycles or they're encouraging um, audiences to walk between their two venues and I think maybe they put bike racks in there to make it easier for people to do it and we talked about them making a bike available for their staff with a little trailer on the back so then they could transport things around Penzance. They should chat to Ride On, I do their social media and they're the e-bike company and they've got cargo bikes that they want people to trial so that might be where... Um, Great. Is that in Cornwall? Yeah. I'm looking for a cargo bike oh, to deliver mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Networking. Yeah. 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 Corks and bikes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be free for each. Uh, a cargo bike? A cargo bike is like a big box bike. They're using up to Okay. Yeah. So it's got the a bit on the back to put your cargo in. Okay, yeah. 
So not children, but um, they have got children one as well. They yeah, all of them. Yeah, they've got. So them they, all they're not a trike, are they? But no, they're two wheels. Actually, the box is actually at the front. They've yes, got a few different ones. So the, the things at the front. So you put all the stuff in the thing. Yeah. So like they have in Denmark, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is probably the one where you have to still tread slightly carefully because of access issues. Like if you go so full on bikes without sort of providing some alternative for the people who need it, then you sort of are, you know, it's not so, make everyone seek vegetarian and there's some weird meat eaters claiming that, you know, it's their right to eat meat. I guess there are, especially at event stuff. So again, this is where you've got control and for your audiences, making sure, you know, yeah, obviously if people are, um, have to travel by, they probably have to travel by car, you focus on that, but you know, is it, is there any way with your staff that you can make it easier um, but if it's not you let it go because it's not where you've got control so um, on big events I've worked on they have separate transport um, logistics companies who basically organize all the stuff so they're like okay we've got an empty van coming from London you're not sending your kit in another empty van we're collecting all this kit in one loop and we're doing it together because especially if it's an international event why are you sending three half-empty vehicles across Europe? So, um, carbon emissions of different vehicles. So, um, I will focus on the car, and this is why focusing on lift sharing, big impact. So, a car with one person uh, is 171 grams per mile, I think, per, per kilometre. Four people, it's 43. So basically, the more people you put in a, a mode of transport, the lower the carbon footprint. And that's why things like um, rail and coach have a lot more of a lower footprint, because you've got lots of people um, absorbing it. I think this is quite heartening for us working in Cornwall, because our bus is shocking. Actually, it's better to get four people in the car than people on the bus. So for, I think pretty much all of us are working mm. semi-rurally. If we can really prioritise the car share, that's actually better than us panicking about bus timetables. Yeah. Exactly. And this is, again, you know, and also for, for staff as well. Can you get people to car share? Um, obviously, it's not practical if people, someone's, someone's, someone's staying till midnight and another one's leaving at 10. But where, having those conversations mm. is an area to start.